Hi there, I'm Alex from the Southern Ukulele Store and I decided to film this video after having very similar conversations one day after the next and it made me think, well maybe at the moment there are a lot of players looking for the same kind of thing. So I think four or five days out of the last seven or eight, I've had customers come in with a list of ukuleles to look at. It's specifically tenor size ukuleles usually between 400 and a thousand pound I know that's a broad price point but that 400 to a thousand pound is very much the perceived intermediate to professional player category where people want to buy an expensive ukulele that they know will be better than what they've had before but they don't want to venture up to kind of the Hawaiian made or sort of premium builder prices so a lot of people start with the flight Mustang if you're thinking yes I was going to start with the flight Mustang then please do watch the rest of this video because hopefully we'll tick all of your boxes and um, I'm going to keep this in the uh, koa slash acacia category because the two woods you know obviously Hawaiian koa is indigenous to Hawaii it's very unique to Hawaii and acacia is often painted as being um, uh, Asian koa or lots of other things in marketing speak but acacia is a slightly different wood generally it's slightly darker slightly earthier in tone um, you still have some sweetness but I, I personally find acacia is a bit more bluesy than koa anyway yeah we're gonna be looking at the flight Mustang and then we're gonna follow up with the snail s60t yep that was definitely on your list it's on everyone's list then we're gonna look at the Miller TA 260g which is around the same price as the snail but without the bling is it really better for not having the bling we'll find out then we'll take a look at one of the pono pro classics something we don't talk about very often but lots of customers want to try we we'll look at the ats hpc and then finally we're going to look at the Romero creations grand tenor and koa no doubt at least one of these ukuleles is on your list right now but we're going to start with the flight mustang and crack on from there Okay, first up today we're going to take a look at the Flight Mustang Tenor. The 2021 version of the Flight Mustang is different to previous incarnations. The pickup is no longer a passive pickup, as I would have mentioned in videos in the past. The pickup is now a double active system which has sound hole mounted tone and volume controls. That's the important difference between this description of the Flight Mustang and ones from maybe 18 months ago. Let's talk about the Flight Mustang then. So this is all solid acacia. It's actually stained and tinted slightly orange to look more like Hawaiian Koa and it does a fantastic job of that. It fooled me the first time I saw one, that's for sure. And every Mustang looks very different, hence why if you look on the Southern Ukulele Store website, when we have multiples of them, we serialize them and, and show you the different photos because they look so unique. The uh, Flight Mustang has a 38mm nut width, so it's one of those wider, more Hawaiian style fingerboards. It's an acacia fingerboard with a mahogany neck. The neck is satin, but the body, as you can see, is high gloss. You also have this scoop style beveled cutaway, so you can reach the higher frets without sacrificing the tone. And as we get really close, you'll see a very subtle abalone rosette. Another feature of the Mustang is the side mounted dots which are nice if you're looking down at your instrument as you play and you have the classic flight headstock with the really nice flight logo and then you have the black open back tuners with some gold trim as well. Oh I forgot to mention the side sound hole, a lovely feature of the flight Mustang. I like that it's kind of a spider's web slash flowery you can really interpret this side sound hole to be whatever you want it to be but yeah the flight mustang is great i absolutely have no problem recommending it to people uh, let's give this a play and see what you think
don't know if I'm only speaking for my own preferences, but I've done so many of these videos and I always pick up flight uh, Mustangs, Fireballs, the Phantoms, the Voyagers, the Ukes that were clearly all made in the same factory and they just feel so good. Like I say, can only speak for my own preferences, but I just always love picking these up and giving them a play. It's the Mustang. Next up today, folks, we're going to take a look at the popular Snail S60T. Part of the reason this ukulele is popular here at SAS is because we made it the top ukulele of 2020. There was simply no ukulele coming into the shop that people were as excited to get their hands on and own as this. And uh, just yesterday I did a social media post where I asked people to send us photos of them with the ukuleles they purchased from us. If you'd like to do that, please email me at alex at ukulele.co.uk. I'd be honoured to, uh, to print your photo out. And this Snail S60T just kept coming up. I kept seeing pictures of happy, smiling customers with this ukulele. It's under £500 as of time of recording in 2021. It's all solid flamed acacia. Every single one's pretty. It's got a bit of a glare there, but you can see it's a very textured, almost lacewood looking top on this particular one. And acacia all the way around. You have that large snail inspired abalone rosette that's the unique thing about this instrument it's the thing that really draws everyone in and you have paduk binding mixed with some yellow uh, abs plastic binding on the front an ebony armrest for maximum comfort in the pub ebony fingerboard and bridge it's one of those string through bridges that people get a bit scared about but they should not get scared about very simple very simple to do uh, ebony fingerboard with the snail slotted headstock with the heart-shaped tuners and the amber buttons. You also have on modern, the 2021 snails are also coming with a back strip as well. I'm not sure if this was a, like for you know structural purposes or not. We never had a problem before, but perhaps it speeds up production to have that, who knows. But it's a really nice feature, really like it. If you have a budget of £500 in 2021, the hardest decision to make is between the S60T and the Flight Mustang. It's gonna lead into the next uke I'm gonna show you, but for now, let's give the S60T a play. Now Google, YouTube research, all of those things are going to lead you towards snail or flight. Possibly Carla or Ohana, but those two models, they always stand out and with good reason. But I'm here to show you an alternative that I really think you should give a chance as well. This is the Miller TA260G. On the surface, it's a very plain looking ukulele. It's not as uh, kind of style three or regal or royal as the two other ukes we've looked at. But what Miller do, is they just make a great ukulele that always defies the price. So at 499, this ukulele it competes perfectly with the Snail S60T, but if you don't fancy the abalone bindings or the cosmetic upgrades, I urge you to look at this because this is a acacia. You can see the quality of this acacia, very high quality acacia all the way around. with a rosewood fingerboard and bridge, a 35mm bone nut, and then Miller's normal paddle style headstock with Miller branded De Jung tuners and the acacia slash snakewood, you know, hardwood style buttons. You have a tie-on bridge, like a classical style bridge. Now I suppose the hardest part of this video is gonna be trying to put across to you why you would choose a Miller over the flight or the snail. And all I can say is it, it's in the hands. It, it's not gonna be for everybody, but a lot of people pick up a Miller and they just feel like they've got an instrument that's worth more than the price. 
Uh, they are made in Taiwan. Men are a very small team. It looks like it's kind of half a dozen luthiers building things to a very high standard and doing quite a wide product range whilst being just such a small knit team. The next shape on the Millers is more of a U shape, meaning it has a flat point on the back of the neck. It's very um, kind of squared off, which suits a lot of people that struggle with bar cords because it gives their thumb a natural flat point to rest on. Otherwise, they I just really like these ukuleles. I would really struggle between whether to own a Flight Mustang S60T or the Miller. And that's the kind of first half of this video really summed up because if you want the ornate you want the bling then you've got lots of options but if you want something traditional sorry traditional that's got that hawaiian kind of sound feel and look but it's not nearly that that price then the miller is just the one to go for i'm gonna give the ta 260g a play and see what you think Next up today we have the Pono ATSH PC, a ukulele that has been around for a decade. People love it and many, many players aspire to own one. I know many great technical players that chose Ponos, uh, a friend of mine, Mark Gallagher, we talk quite often about his Pono Pro Classic, but I'm here today to talk to you about the Acacia one. If you look at the quality and the straight grain on that Acacia, you can see that Pono really do select the premium tone woods for the Pro Classic series. There's nothing apologetic about this. It's just good wood all the way around. You have front and back, I think ebony binding. I didn't double check that, but it looks like ebony binding. And you have a front uh, rope rosette. An ebony fingerboard and bridge with just the slightest of radius on the fingers when you play have a 35 mil nut with a bone nut and saddle and a slotted headstock with gold Grover tuners. The Pono feels a bit more robust, a bit thicker than the other ukuleles we've looked at so far in this video. It feels almost like uh, 100 years of guitar technology has gone into building a great ukulele, if that makes sense as opposed to sometimes where you see a hundred years of guitar technology going into making a terrible ukulele. This is what can happen if a, if a guitar factory made uh, premium ukuleles. Uh, it comes with a gig bag, it's just a great ukulele, under a thousand pound, it's a uke that many aspire to and it certainly in the past has given um, Koaloha, Kanalea, Kamaka ukuleles a run for their money by offering so much for about 15-20% less. So let's give this a play and see what you think. Last up today, we're gonna to take a look at the Romero Creations Grand Tenor. This is Hawaiian Koa. It looks very similar to Acacia. The other four ukuleles we've looked at today have been Acacia, but this is the real deal, the Hawaiian stuff. And it looks stunning. It's got that orange tinge to it, and even though this would be considered, I guess, kind of a standard, maybe kind of 2A Koa wood, you can still see some really lovely holographic textures and a really nice uh, straight grain, which isn't always the case. You have that small abalone rosette, 
with an ebony fingerboard and bridge and a 38 mil nut whip so a wide nut with a very thin profile neck the Ramira Creations ukuleles are made in Vietnam I just double checked in the sound tile because I didn't want to get that wrong um, and the whole Ramiro Creations range, it range is unique even the replica model has its own kind of uniqueness to it the grand tenor is about five to ten percent bigger than your average tenor in terms of the body size it's 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 giant if you were a singer it would be that big baritone opera opera singer at the back that keeps everybody on their toes and yeah there's nothing not to love about Ramiro creations ukulele uh, i'm going to give the grand tenor color a play and see what you think oh no low g alert Okay folks, we've looked at five ukuleles. You can tick them all off of your list now if you're unable to visit the store. But please remember we are open now, Tuesday to Friday, nine to five, and we're available on the phones uh, Monday to Friday. And we would love to see you. It's been lovely having people come back in after such a long period of time. And things are just really starting to feel more normal again. It's nice to talk to customers about instruments rather than a camera all the time. Uh, but if you do have any questions and you can't make it in store, feel free to give me a call 01202 430 820. You can email me alex at ukulele.co.uk. And yeah, I would be uh, very, very happy if you check out Ukes of Alex, my own channel. And I'll be back very, very soon with some more ukuleles for sus.